put together a little compilation video here showing some Kaiser movements and just kind of audibly describe uh, how I see this being preferential versus static weights in most cases. And, you know, and as I've alluded to, you know, particularly with the injury restoration concepts, but, you know, really the five key points that stick out to me is number one, the fluid resistance type, it, you know, it's just a smooth contraction. And I think that uh, from a proprioception and kind of kinesthesia standpoint, it allows athletes to activate and, and engage different areas of the body that they wouldn't typically be compelled to do if we were doing a similar movement with a static resistance. The other or the second point is the acceleration through end range. This is something that, you know, is really critical with the Kaiser during return to play where with static weight, we have that inherent deceleration as we approach terminal range. With the Kaiser, we're really able to accelerate all the way through these angles and through terminal range. Number three is the body position and the mechanics of the movement. And this, I think, is something that is critical for uh, being able to create leverage and to be able to position the body and manipulate the body position as they're going through motion. And then the other two are really the, the tracking and the ability to see Differences between left and right, differences between rep to rep, set to set, we get power output, you know, and then when we have, when we do have the case of an injury, uh, you know, for instance, a, a rotator cuff or a shoulder, if we can only get, uh, you know, X amount of pounds on the right side, on the injured side, we can still adjust on that left side, if, you know, to the healthy side and, and get more compatibility between left and right. So we'll cruise through this uh, little compilation here, but this is... Uh, one of my athletes here, Jamoy Hodge, who's a, an incredible young man and a, really a stud inside linebacker for TCU. But with Jamoy here, we're really trying to emphasize the coordination of, of the trunk and working from hips to shoulders. And you can see him there on that crossbody chop doing just that. This is a, a single arm shot put. And for this one here, this is one that I'll look at as being kind of a you know, a potential primary movement for somebody with a shoulder injury in lieu of a, of a chest press or an overhead press. And, you know, again, we see the body, you know, moving in action with the arm. And I think that's a big priority, um, you know, for all athletes, really. The reciprocating pe press pull is a good one. This is a common one, but here we're getting some good trunk action. And then similarly here on the low high to press, you know, transitioning through the hips and the core and then finishing with that extended arm overhead, um, you know, similar to a landmine pattern there. Simple chop from split here, uh, but with this one, you know, we're adding a little bit of eccentric overload here as we're coming back towards the base of the cable. And, you know, for this one, this is a good one, again, for integrating that trunk. Now here, we're going to see some of the rotator cuff uh, series. So this one being kind of just a posterior fly here. And for this, you know, you'd be very surprised with the amount of resistance we have here. But for somebody like Jamoy, who has such big deltoids, big traps, big lats, I mean, dude, super strong, you know, I think the Kaiser does a really good job of not allowing the athletes to quote unquote body the weight or just let their, you know, their default strength take over. So these were really fatiguing for him. You know, we got a good sweat out of this now coming into that A position. But, you know, again, this is a great opportunity to see you know, if we were coming, you know, back from an injury or if we were, you know, we had a deficit side, somebody like a linebacker is definitely going to have some asymmetries because of their hit shoulder versus their non-hit shoulder. Um, you know, being able to adjust and tweak this resistance amount from left to right is definitely critical. And you can see he's doing a good job here pushing through end range as we get to the top of that movement there. <clears throat> and then to finish out here, just a dynamic T row. So now working bilaterally with this. And again, you know, these are all the same themes over and over again, but you can see how we can accelerate all the way through the end range there. So when it comes down to it, you know, give or take, I, I'm going to take the, the Kaiser on a lot of cases for, for the sake of injury restoration and return to play. And I think those are good examples.